guys, Vita here, I'm back for another video, and today we're going to talk about taking care of your art supplies. As artists, we spend a lot of money on art supplies, as you know, I'm one of them. Art supplies are not cheap and no point. So, let me spend money on supplies if you want to take care of them. And there's certain things you can take care of differently and certain differently in different ways, sorry. But taking care of them is important. So, today I'm going to show you ways to take care of paint brushes and your paints and erasers and markers and things like that. So let's get started. Okay, first we're gonna talk about paint brushes. Paint brushes. Now let me talk about this brush first of all. This is a synthetic acrylic brush, well all media. That means you can use acrylic, you can use oil, you can use it for any time. But I, this brand is called Royal Link Nickel. I love these brushes. Now a few months ago I talked about the the uh what was it called? The Liquitex basic brushes. Those are nice I'm a, a, I'm over them now. I'm done. I've moved on to this company. It's a real company. This is a real good brush. It, they come up in sizes. I have them in a small one, and they, and they have fine liners, and I have many, a mini fan. But these brushes are great. So, cleaning brushes is very important. Because we use a lot of paint, all types of paint, and the paint can get stuck in the brushes and the bristles and all here and look disgusting and turn look out and brushes can look terrible. So, there's way to clean them. People use um, brush cleaners because they're very good. Some are, some not. I've sometimes back and forth been with pink soap. This is pink soap. It's a brush cleaner. You put it in water and it's like soap and you scrub it on here or it's come out. It works but not very well. It's not so good. It kind of sucks. But it's good for cleaning your hands off. But the thing about brushes are, if you don't want to use a cleaner like pink soap or any other thing that is on the outdoor market, you can use hair conditioner, the conditioner you use on your own head. You can clean your brushes. It works fabulous. Better than the stuff that's out there are supplies that are made for brush cleaners. Your hair club, your hair conditioner or shampoo works great for cleaning hair brushes. So it's important you try it out your own hair plus use your own hair on your hair, especially girls. You know, we girls love our conditioners and shampoos. So shampoo conditioner works best with these. And when you clean them, make sure you get like in the in the brush here, you all down here, because sometimes paint sits all around here, it gets hard and hard to come out, so really, really scrub on here, but get in between the brushes and everything. And I also discovered that after you, uh, after you clean it with the soap and dry it off, you know, smooth with the water, because you want to keep the brush this normal shape it came in, it's, 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 it's um, original shape. So squeeze out the water here, and then my trick I discovered, I'm sure of you, that if you let it dry up a little bit and after it's like somewhat dry but not too dry, take the brush like this and kind of hit it with your hand like this. So it looks like this for a while. And once you do this, it, it dries faster and also it keeps the fluffiness of the brushes. It works well with this brand um, paint brush. Not sure about other ones, but this brand works perfect well. I do all the time I use these brushes. I wash them out really good, let them dry for a bit when they're like almost completely dry. I'm just brush in my hand. Keep it like that. Just beat it on your hand for a while. And once it gets when it's really dry, it gets still fluffy. So the brush is fluffy. And I've used this more than one time already. See this how see how good it is? It's really clean and fluffy. It really works. So that's in my brushes. Also about brushes is these are synthetic brushes. I don't use animal hair I don't believe in killing animals for a brush. Synthetic brushes are the way to go. They're better and they're an animal will have his life. So, no animal hair brushes. Okay, next we'll talk about paint. Now, paint is probably buy one of the most expensive products on our supplies that are to buy. Things get very expensive. You must see use oil paints or anything. I used to use acrylic paints. I use acrylic paints. These are not expensive, but they are pricey. If you buy them more than one of them, they do get pricey. So, thing about paint, as you see, I've used this a lot now. See, this, I don't know how this is in here. I'm using a while. Let me see. See, this, okay, this can come out stuff in here too. But let me show you what happens sometimes. When you use a lot of paint, let's see with jars like this, sometimes, and you get paint on the edge of the jar, like all around here, and inside there, and outside here. You can kind of tell here, it gets dried up just like that. See the little thing? It's a little dry here. And this can happen because we use a lot of paint. We put the paint on the side of the and we let the paint on the side of the lid and things like it, it happens all the time paint. Especially if you have a lot, use a lot of time. Now you have to sometimes what I do to help you keep it 
clean because if you don't clean the edges sometimes, the top will not close properly. The top it has little has little rings in here, I don't know what they're called, but little teeth in here or something that will fit for this cap for this bu for this jar. So if you've got stink up on here, this won't close properly. And that means air will get through here and the paint will dry up. So make sure you clean off this part. If it gets hard, just don't take some time and peel off the paint here. So I can do it right now. See, look, it's a good little peel off up. See? Peel some off so, it, so it, this part is somewhat clean. You won't get a stick and span super clean like you had to be first bought at the store, but it will get somewhat clean. So this cap can fit on here properly and you can close it tightly so you can keep the air out of here so the paint will dry up. And then also, like if you have two paint, like tubes, this is the same Liquitex basic acrylic paint tube. Sometimes tubes, the paint will fall here. We, you gotta squeeze the paint out when you use it. So when you open it, sometimes you get, see, for example, you see, see that stuff right there? This, this can sometimes clog up the top of the paint because I've used it a lot probably and I've squeezed it and squeezed it and squeezed it and the paint's built up over time. Here, so you just gotta peel it off just like that. It's like paint, it's like, see? It's like paint skin. You gotta clean it off so it looks clean again so it doesn't clog up this part. When this is clogged up, it's hard, the paint will hard to get out. So, every now and then go through to your tubes of paint and see if there's anything clogged up here and remove it, you know, so you don't get any clogging paint. And also, I suggest to do this. No, don't get caught doing this. I do this all the time in stores. Don't tell nobody. This is between you and me and nobody else, okay? When you're buying paint in stores and you're not sure, if, if sometimes paint in stores can sit on shelves for a very long time, even months and weeks, sometimes years, because they don't cycle all the paints on stores like they do in grocery stores. You know, you know how old the paint is, it could be months old. Never know. Paint can last for a long shelf time, but sometimes, not always. Sometimes you can get a, you can buy a paint, and if they say in the store itself, don't open product, I open the product because I do it on purpose to make sure the paint is still wet and not dry. Because I've had experiences in our stores and in our stores before, I'm not going to say the name, but they're closed now. That the paint I bought from the shelf. I opened it, my, I didn't do it in the store, I did it when I got home. I got home and opened it, the whole paint inside was dried up. It was terrible. I had to go back to the store and make my money back and return it. So after that I've learned, before you buy the paint, sneakily, quietly, so no one sees you doing it in the store, open the paint, look at it, go get it. And sometimes there's no seal on paint, especially in jars. Sometimes there's no, you can just see no seals. Depends on the brand though. But open it to see if there too is easy to do. Just open the tube, you know, and squeeze a little bit out. So you're there. That's the usual, but don't get caught doing it. Don't tell nobody to do it. Shh. Okay, next one I'm talking about markers. Now, you know how I'm obsessed with fabric house markers. I have I have plenty of plenty of more. It's gonna make a whole collection. Love them. So fabric house markers, markers in general, they we all know this for in general. You have markers. Keep the cap on, because don't keep the cap on, the marker dry out. Simple as that. But some are a little different. Every castle marker, they have, they suggest you store them a certain way, and they tell you instructions on a marker. Let me see if I can find it. See, store horizontally. It says you own a marker. So because it's ink, they think the ink will dry up if you a certain way. So, so store it a certain way. But generally, keep the marker cap on, you know, all the time. But sometimes we don't forget to do that, and the marker dries up, and you don't know it. So you have, Lots and lots of markers. I suggest that I do it sometimes. Go go to markers once in a while. You know, do a little test thing on, on the marker to see if it works. Once they don't work, throw them away. Once they do work, keep them. So it's kind of like cleaning out to the organizing marker section, see what's for, what's good and what's bad. I do it my niece sometimes because she likes to play and she likes the color. So we do a little project. You know, let's test out these markers and she colors her little tools. And then don't work with them away. She can do it very well. She's helped me a lot doing that. So we do it good. So if that becomes the markers, store horizontally, because that's the that's the rule for the markers, and keep capsule as normal thing. The these are the fabric castle borderline bigger ones. They're really good. These are the kick funny markers. I did a review on them before. They're really, they're okay. They're pretty good. Not bad. But the thing that these are, they these if they dry out, you can replenish them by dipping the tip in water and they'll replenish everything over again. 
So let's put it that you this one and I have this skinny one. Where are the skinny ones? Hold on. Uh these two, sorry. These two are the same way. These mark a lot of kitty friendly ones too, and what well, well, these. So when these dry out, all you have to do is dip in water and they, and they work again. So that's the thing I'll be. But the fabric I most I mostly use is big fat ones, these. These don't do that. They dry out, they dry out, but you store them horizontally to last a long time. So general rule, keep capital markers, surely markers will stay good. If some die out, test them out. See it works, see what it doesn't doesn't work, throw them out. Simple that mark. Okay. Last year we're talking about erasers. Now erasers all kinds of sizes and textures and things like that. This is my little eraser box. I have ink mix and max in here and stuff. And if I keep erasers in here as well. So let's see. This is yeah, okay, we're gonna talk about let's see. I have a few erasers in here we'll talk about. Okay. These are design needed erasers. These are needed erasers. That means they can bend up as like clay. They come in like this, you use them a lot. And this is art gum. Art gum is like classic. It's design art gum. It's harder to use. It's coming in a square shape like this. I use this like in high school. Like, oh, this is like flashbacks to me. Anyway, so, okay. The, oh, yeah, this is the black eraser. I'll go with this as well. Okay, so, this thing with the erasers. This one. Um, eraser, that all comes in sizes. Some they get dirty quickly. Like, let's talk about the need, the need eraser first and take what I mean here. Okay, need eraser is like clay. It's, it comes in different sizes, a bit smaller than this, bigger than this, and you can bend it. Listen, look at this one, so I've already out already. This is, that is, came out, started like this, and it ends up like this, and I would use it a lot. So that ends up like this, it gets dirty. This is, like, this is somewhat dirty, because it's not this gray and darker than before. So when need erasers get dirty, they get, you know, when you put marker and you get that, and they get, like, nasty, and they've got the lead paint on them, and all that you use, and, you know, charcoal on them, it's like that. It, it looks, it gets nasty. You may want to clean it. So what you can do is, if you have a little thing on the edges, you can tear, because this is like clay. See, like, tear, pops off, see? And you can reshape it, because it's lighter clay, lighter color gray, supposed to be. And it bend it, and you shape it, and clean it. When you bend it, it will go away and you can be like that. Or you, you don't want to tear it like I did. Just flip, you can just fold the ends over because you want to see it. Be able to get, get the, the spot away. And just bend it and it's like clay. See? That's why it's quite a neat eraser. You can knead it like dough. It needs and needs and needs until you get it the way you want it to be. That's neat erasers. Now, harder erasers like the art gum, this is not going to be the This is just how it is. And you break this thing, I don't know you can break it, it's very hard. But usually, you somebody you can pencil and you get that like black mess on the edges, and it's like I have a little bit here, like a little blackness on the edges. You may want to get that away. So, what I do sometimes is take the plain paper and I'll rub it on the paper sometimes. Plain paper, put my paper, and it'll come it'll get clean. Because I don't like the little black mess that gets on the razor. I'm really OCD clean. I don't, I don't like that. So sometimes I'll just erase it off and make it clean. So it gets clean. Because you see, if you don't, don't take it off, your next piece of future drawing you will do on it, they will have black smudge on it from your, from your eraser. And you don't want that. So if someone now then clean erasers, no, the edges, so they go. Because you used to use edge erasers, you do. Things like that. Now, the black eraser, this is for like charcoal. The fastest black eraser is for charcoal. I use this for everything. Like if they enable charcoal, take charcoal off, but. I use for I use this for regular drawings. I use this for charcoal. I use it for everything. This is this is like this is a miracle eraser. I love this thing. And I have I need to get more. I only have two, but just another one here. Oh, uh, here's here's. See, this does get dirty because it's already black, so you can't see anything. But it's this is easy. But the eraser for everything. I love it. I need one more. Get more. It's more and it cleans better than a need erasers in Arca. So this is a good eraser. You don't need to clean it because it's already does. You won't see anything. It won't ruin your painting, your drawings, you know like that. So clean erasers. It may sound a little no, innately clean, no OCD, but it will help you in your future drawings. You don't want black smudges unless you down for that thing on your drawing, some from your eraser. So keep erasers clean, you know, black smut free of them stuff like that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned how to clean it, take care of your supplies, because our supplies are expensive. You want to keep them for a long time. You don't want to waste them. You don't want to not be nice to them. So you want to be nice to them by cleaning them. 
So I hope this video helped you. And before I go, I have a big announcement. Okay, here's what it is. I have been on part of the website Black Art America for a very long time now, for probably four years. I can't tell you the exact number. But Black Art America is a website where for African American artists, who mostly fine artists or any kind of art you do, they're open to you. But yeah, I've been here for a while, and it's like it's kind of a community. It's like a Facebook for fine artists who are African American. It's a good site. I've been here for a while. I put my work on there. I put my videos on there, and I've met great people on there as well. So, I have been invited to speak at their second annual Fine Art Show, which is coming on October 23rd to 25th here in Harlem, NYC. So, I will be speaking the last day, October 25th, on the members' panels, pa panel, sorry, speaking about how Black Art America has affected my career as an artist and my work as an artist and things like that. So I'm very excited about it. I'll be on the panel speaking. Um, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous too. But I think I'm looking forward to it. I have to do a speech. So I'm praying for that these days. So I, was, I will post information about the, about the uh, art show in the description box below or things like that. And I can update my speech and then like that. I may do a little practice video of my speech on here so you hear what's going to be. So October 25th, I was speaking at the Black Art America Fine Art Show members. members panel uh it's a sunday morning i'm looking forward to it and thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye